Car Guys, Car yes. Gal, what's going on? Good morning. This is Lou Ramirez, the Car Guy. This is Fred Lenartz, the Subprime Hero. And we are in mm. the cafe with yes, an we incredible are. solutionary that you're definitely going to want to get set up and get ready to take some notes because there is a lot that she is bringing to the brew. But until you get to see Miss Shannon Everhart, who's joining us today, go ahead and get you some... that gets anybody else excited but man that music really gets me jamming and <laughs> what you didn't see is that backstage shannon has been jamming out she was getting, getting, down. getting oh. down so we're gonna go ahead and i enjoyed watching that to the show everybody check it out this hey, is hey, shannon hey, ever what's up what's up can we just have that music like underneath our entire session <laughs> probably hold on <laughs> All right, just kidding. So anyway, car guys, <laughs> car guys, welcome back to the cafe. Hands <laughs> off the buttons. Take the hands off the buttons. <laughs> welcome. Oh, welcome. welcome. Welcome to the cafe. Well, Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. here. Oh, I wait. miss you guys. We miss we you miss too. You. It's been like half a year since we've seen you. Yeah. February. So it's wow. it's definitely it. time is flying by. I, I, gosh, I remember when February felt normal. I know. <laughs> it felt yeah, really it normal did. that month. That it really did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's not normal anymore. Whew, but you know, the, the cool thing is, is that you know a lot of things have changed over the last six months. So it's a great time to get you on the show. I mean, not being able to see you, and I know that you've being in the position where you're at, and we'll get into that a little bit later. You've been able to see what a lot of dealers are doing. Um, it's it's amazing things that some dealers are doing, and there's some stuff that dealers are just sitting there doing nothing and just hoping yeah, that I, things will happen. I'm gonna tell you, I'm proud of some of our dealers oh. that have come through this. So yeah, we've got some good stuff to share for sure. That's really well, awesome. Yeah. This is this is exciting because car guys, car gals, there's uh, some people that bring a little bit of a different flavor to everybody's cup, and mm -hmm. Shannon is a solutionary that is able to. Uh, find a way to literally be the second half of the uplifting. Well, she does upshift you too. She's an upshift uplifter. She's a car gal that is finding ways to help people uh, be better, but she has a real knack for really uplifting people. And that's something that is a culture uh, that this business has been screaming for, for many decades. And we're coming around to a phase where there's so many people that are trying to bring the positive and Shannon, as long as I've known her, has been bringing the positive, has been bringing oh, yeah. the excitement, has There's been no bringing doubt. the joy yeah. to the room and showing us cruddy car guys how to do the same thing inside of our dealerships. So <laughs> I want to make sure that you all understand the the I guess uh, the gravity Ooh, of you. the. The and actual the morning too. Pun I know. Maybe yeah, that's because I'm sipping some. Because we're drinking some car guy coffee. Get my diet coke going. <laughs> Get you some. Get you some. So, but for people that do like the taste of it, right? We want to make sure that you enjoy. Uh, what it takes to get better at what you do by changing how it is that you approach things from the inside out, right? There's so many things that are on the outside of us that impact what we do in the dealership or in our life. Shannon has always been somebody that's challenged us to dig deep to be able to affect what's going on outside of us. Yeah. And that's part of the culture that she brings. Uh, if, as you see on her shirt, uh, the ESP, that's not just making sure that we know how to speak without speaking or know without yeah. knowing. 
but that's enjoyable, simple, and prosperous. Boom. And that's a culture that they bring to the table. Uh, she is the director at Gravitational, Gravitational Marketing. Marketing. That's yeah. right. And she helps to bring an element that most dealerships have actually been utilizing recently, but she's changed the game on it. She's changed the name of it. She's changed the way that people even look at it. And the effectiveness that's inside of that is, it goes without saying, but I'm excited to get started on this first. Oh man. This five liner, I really am excited. It is, you know, we're gonna get with this five liner. We're gonna start, we got five questions for you, Shannon. And these five questions are designed just to bring out your story. Uh, the first question is nine times out of 10 is the same question. And I'm gonna start with that. Whoa. First question I'm gonna hit you with is, is first before, things first. Before you first things I'm gonna hit with you us. with is have you ever heard of forgive focus fly? <laughs> That's not a question. That's not a question. We're gonna go right into that because first things first, before we go anywhere in this, before we do the five liner, we do need to forgive focus fly before we do that. That's it's an amazing right. thing. We got to get our day going. We need to forgive focus fly. I remember at the very last meeting we did down there, down in, in February in Orlando with you guys and Lou. 2020? Was on, yeah, yeah, 2020. 2020, yeah. <laughs> it was February. And uh, Lou gets up, you know, and we're doing our little, we're doing a little circle when he comes That's out with right, his yeah. and he gets everybody to do the forgive focus fly. I was like, so proud at that moment. I almost <laughs> choked up watching him do it. I was like, look at him do it. I actually think I have that on video. All of yeah. us at once. Either that or a picture of it. I'm pretty sure I have us on video doing it. Oh, that's so well, awesome. It's Shoot super that to impressive us. to get like 20 something car guys, old and young, right? To stand up and do your forgive focus fly. And that's it how our meetings cool. start uh, when we do training. Well, that's how my meeting starts every day at the dealership when I get the guys together, but that's how we would do our training, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's trying, doesn't have their coffee in them yet. They're not ready to go. They got an argument on the way to yep. work. They're mad at the customer from yesterday. You know, get that junk off your shoulders, folks. Forget, focus, fly. Let's okay. get ready. Shannon, join us together as we apply the three F's so we can keep growing. Y'all ready? Let's go, car guys and car gals on three. One, two, three. Forgive. Forgive. Focus. Focus. Fly. Wow. That's right. All right. Let's get this five lighter on the way. <laughs> All right. All right. So first question is the same question I ask everybody. I feel like it's going to be super personal. I don't know why I'm like bracing myself for this. Because it is. Be ready. Be ready because it is personal. It is. It. The first question is, it's just your why. It's your purpose. What drives you every single day when you wake up? And this is, I think that a lot of people talk about the why and it's a big deal because if you have a why, I think that your life can go a lot further than you think if you really focus on it. So what is your purpose? What's your why? What makes you motivated? What's your, so what's I'm going to give you my kind of obvious answer. And sure. Then, you know, I have a little girl that I absolutely oh. love. You know, that's how we all are us moms and dads. That's how it works. So yeah. So um, everything is for her and it's just she and I in this world. So it's kind of fun to do things just the two of us. So, you know, I get up and work hard because I want to make experiences but interestingly enough, now that I say the word experiences, that's really, I think, what gets me up in the morning in general. Um, I, you know, I, I'm kind of lucky. Well, I'm lucky in a lot of ways, actually. Uh, but my job at Gravitational Marketing allows me to kind of get into the inner workings of what's going on in, in different dealerships. So I have a lot of different experiences. Of all the people that I work with, really, if anybody's going to travel and go see a dealership and really get into the inner workings, it's me. So I really love those experiences. I think um, that adds muscle to my character and to um, obviously, you know, it rounds me out as a person. It gives me things to talk about, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So the more places you go and, and the more people you meet gives you all that experience. And, and I think that's I like collecting those. Yes. I love that answer. And it's 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 that's it's a very. Because you're right that the obvious answer it's our families and our children, our loved ones. We we want to do our best for them. We want to you know we want to be able to look them in the face and tell them, hey, do it this way because we did it that way. We know that it's the right way. You know, so there's a lot about that. It's leaving a little legacy with your family, but it's the experiences. And you made a very good point there. I know when you start to think about that question, because it is there's a lot of pe most people they'll bring up family, and I, I use family too as a motivator. It's a daily motivator for me. Yeah. But deep down, it's it's more. It's the experience. It's the it's, it's just that feeling of knowing that I'm moving forward. It's that feeling of knowing that I'm constantly growing. It's that feeling of making those memories happen, that looking forward to future memories, you know, and you make a really good point in that, Shannon. That's a great well, answer. Why did, why did we have these little boogers to begin with, you know? 
to make to memories go through it again to kind of maybe i don't know i mean everybody's got their own reasons why but you know um to experience life through their eyes and to oh, learn life through their eyes maybe i don't know there's lots of reasons why we want to become parents in the first place but yeah once we have them we should we should uh try and make it as rich as possible 100 percent. that's oh. awesome and what what you'll notice is that there's a common a common thread with many solutionaries is that their why is they're, they're investing so much into their their family or those that are going to continue on that legacy and that is something that we we carry out uh so much of a of an echoing uh announcement that legacy is mm -hmm. very important legacy is what we're what yes. what is actually of value we have many things we have many um i mean there's dollars there's cents there's yeah. equipment there's there's recognition, there's trophies, there's rings, there's all kinds of cool stuff that we can collect over time. But leaving, it's not so much what we get, it's what we leave, right? It's yeah. what we actually leave. And, yes. and your child uh, and, and our children, and it, it is that thing that we're working so hard for to make sure that they have it not just better than us, but they have it brighter than us. They're, they're more, uh, the, the opportunities are greater for them than they were for us because of maybe some of the, the roads that we help pave or um, some of the lessons that we help leave, right? There's many people that have achieved ridiculously great levels of achievement, yet they were taught and given fundamental things from people that they were in the streets with, they were in the gutter with, they were in poverty with, right? But those core lessons that they received were the things that helped motivate them to achieve in great things. And it's it's honorable, again, anybody that, that counts their children as the ones that are the, the things that motivate them most. Um, and I completely attribute that. I completely uh, honor that. And we, we applaud that and completely understand. All you car guys and car guys well, understand. You guys, you know, everything that you were just saying too, Lou, we could say that about the people that report to us that we're trying to develop into leaders, you know? 100%. Um, so that we can go on and tackle a new challenge. And, you know, everything that you were actually saying reminds me of somebody that I, that I work with that I respect immensely. Um, her name's Kat Fletcher. I'm going to give her a little shout out because she does not get enough recognition in the world. So That's her awesome. name can just be in the universe is what I'm going to say right now. Um, but it was several years ago when Kat and I were working together and we still do that. I told her I was her director at the time. I said, come for my job. If you if you want my job, come for it. I'm, I'm not scared of that. Um, I'll find something to do. I, I'm, I am a builder in this company. And so I was on the leadership team. I knew what else was happening within the company. So it didn't scare me for her to do that. And now she's a superstar at our company. And I feel like a lot of that has to do with the, some of the leadership legacy that, um, you know, I'm going to pat my own back on. But really, it's because of somebody doing that for me, too, before yeah. I did that. So. That's you know, and, and that's that is the key. You know, we, we talk about Lou and I, we talk about legacy a lot. And a legacy isn't just to your children. It's to the, everybody you touch. When you, If you're a leader, you guys talk you about leave. your team like they're your kids. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And they are, you know, because they are kids. You know, I love <laughs> they, are kids. they are children. But no, they, they yeah, absolutely not are. In way, not in that annoying way. But no, you guys take I, time out of your life to, to have private one on ones with them about what's going on oh, in their man. world, going on in oh. their dance world. Absolutely. If to share with you. I mean, you guys are there for them. You know, and, and they are, you know, we, we actually spend so much time with them. It's almost more time than we spend with our own families or almost the same amount, you know. And so you have to be able to understand that that is a relationship, that that is kind of like a father son, even though it's not, you know, you're a mentor to to the to the student. You know, you're the you're they're the grasshopper and I'm the master, you know, and I'm all I'm trying to do is have them take that pebble out of my hand one day. And when they do, it's going to be an exciting day. And right. you look forward to that. <clears throat> there's some leaders out there that don't want that. I, I've seen it. I've seen leaders who try to keep their people down. They try to keep them as weak, their sauce as weak as possible, instead of trying to throw extra flavor in there and help them right. become that good sauce that everybody wants. And that is the complete opposite of what the culture needs to be. You know, there's a lot of old school car guys, you know, don't, you, know, you need to be this way. But we, in this world today, not only do we need to accept and embrace this type of culture, but we need to bring that on not just to our people that work for us, but into our clients that come in and buy vehicles from us. You need everybody to treat them. Developed. You're developing everybody. I mean, however you want to think of development, but just now out of nowhere in my mind, I was thinking of like how film is processed. Oh, yes. You know? like, and same thing for our customers too. We got to uncover what their story is and we've got to, you know, work through their anxieties 
Uh, we've got to develop them. They have preconceived notions of how this whole car buying process is supposed to work. And we've got to undo some of that. So all of it is development, just like how we're developing our kids into oh. good people. I love how you I love how you talked about that. Like it's the way that they think that you buy a car, but we need to show them the right way, you know, yeah. and that's it. That's the job of a good, good. And I don't even like to call a salesperson a good, you know, car buying coach. Right. And that's and that's the way it is. You've got to coach people and show them the right way. People have their arms tied because they're so used to this old heart, you know, old school way of negotiating these stupid numbers and trying, you know, keep your, keeping your cards. So no one sees your cards, you know, it's okay to show your cards. It's okay to be open, but the people who are selling the vehicle us car buying coaches need to be more honest. We need to be more transparent. We need to do all these things. But the biggest thing is we need to understand we're serving people. We're not, you know, yeah. Is there, is there an end game? We, yeah. We want to make money. We want to do all these things, but those things are byproducts of doing the right thing for people on a constant basis. Right. Right. And if you look at it like that in the end, by the end of the year, end of the, whatever time that you're looking at, you will be prof. You will be. It'll be enjoyable. It'll be simple. And it'll, it'll be, be profitable prosperous. and prosperous. I should yeah. say. Sorry, I'm yeah. saying profitable. Profitable. That's fine. But the uh, it really works. That's but, it. but it is. You know, and, and it's a great culture. You know, it's so glad to have you here. I know we just talked about that first question for a while. I'm gonna let Lou jump onto the second hey, question. So but man, there's so much that draws from the why. It's unreal because it's. I know. Right? No, we, we can go. The, we can go the whole episode on the why, right? Because digging it deeper into okay. it. It's always a constant thing that you're going to have to reference back to. I know training the guys, we try to make sure that they stay hyper-focused on the why mm. so that they stay committed to doing the what they're doing, right? right? If you lose sight of why you're fighting inside a war, you may not do it anymore. If you, if you lose sight of what it is that you're working or why you're doing this job, yes. you might not want to do it with as much passion. Boom. Right. So that why is such a big motivator. And that's why we kick it off every single time, making sure that we get to the deepness of the brew. That's with the beans we're talking with. So speaking of doing things that are enjoyable, <laughs> simple and prosperous and Boom. getting to the why, I'm going to kick another why over here. OK, OK. Because for you car guys and car gals that do not know um, what it is that she has helped become a leader and an innovator in and we kind of just touch base on it the, the the shaping of not just being a salesperson but being a coach mm -hmm. right somebody mm -hmm. that's taking a customer and not just selling them something but we're teaching them how to properly buy something that posture is different right and then also making that be something that a customer is convinced and knowing that you're not just saying these things to me so that i buy this you're not just saying these things to me so that you have a sale. You're legitimately trying to help me be better at buying because it's me that pays the price. It's me that is in this for the long haul. It's me that's trusting my life in this automobile, right? So that person is being told that maybe some of your ways of thinking are not the best. Okay? <laughs> and I know we met an hour ago, but I'm trying to tell you that what you've done to get where you are, I'm going to help you fix but going forward, we can't do these things anymore. Right. 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 Well, that's even, that's like post, you know, uh, coaching. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. That's right. Post so, coach. So with that, and she has, and this is the whole reason why we met inside of Orlando at a meeting with a bunch of car guys and car gals because they created a place where managers can come together yes. and learn how to adjust the culture. It's one thing to get leads. It's another thing to understand how to actually process them when they show up at your store. And all stores are different. Some have BDCs, some don't. Uh, some have salespeople, some have consultants, some have coaches, some all those different things. But she transformed the name from BDC to A-Team. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, me. oh, uh oh, I'm spilling the beans. I need to let you get to that. Why was it so important? So let me help with that, everybody. She has a system of making BDC departments, which is what we've come to know them as, right? In incredibly Whatever that effective. means. Incredibly effective. <laughs> and she changed it. Why was it so important, Shannon? Here's your question number two. Why was it so important to change the culture or the understanding of what a BDC department was and to bring that into uh, such an elevated place of understanding inside of the dealership culture. It's on you. Okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Because um, BDC is definitely a constraint that I'm passionate about that I wanna talk about. Um, 
But I also want to make sure that we clear the first constraint that most dealerships have that when I first start talking to dealerships, usually this is the problem that we need to get out of the way. The first obstacle to get out of the way is getting leads. And I don't mean um, buying lists or getting leads from third parties or anything like that, but having really authentic, naturally um, excited about your business customers, either uh, coming in as web forms and leads or actually picking up the phone or coming into the dealership. Um, for the most part, the industry really does not, uh, there's two very distinct markets in our industry. And for lots of reasons, the industry really only focuses on one part of the marketplace. And it's a very small percentage of the marketplace. It's only about 2%. And those are your shopping customers. But what about the people that are in the 98%, the people that aren't, that didn't wake up this morning and think that they could buy a nicer, newer car, but we know in the industry that most likely whatever it is that's holding them back from a nicer, newer car is something that we can help them with. And so the first constraint is to make sure that you guys have um, enough of those types of leads that are coming in because the conversations with that customer versus a shopping customer is different. A shopping customer usually I feel like is more of a transactional conversation. When you're talking to somebody who has a problem, who um, like we just said, feels like they know how the shopping experience is supposed to go. For example, they believe strongly that they're supposed to have a sizable down payment in their back pocket when they walk in the dealership. That's not necessarily the case. We know that, but the buying public, the people that have problems, the people that don't have cash right now, feel like that's what's holding them back. So the first thing uh, after we clear the constraint of leads is to make sure that we clear the constraint of what's been holding them back. And the typical BDC does not have those kinds of kinds of conversations. They have the kind of conversations that the shopping customer can relate to where it is more transactional. It is more about like cloth or leather, um, you know, do, you know, car, truck, SUV, third you know third row or not sunroof or not that's a very transactional conversation and so every bdc out there in the world is getting up today and doing that kind of job by and large that's that's the conversations that are happening but really the people that can help grow our business the ones the customers out there that would love to buy a nicer newer car but don't think that they can because they don't have that down payment that they believe they absolutely have to have if we tell them which is what you guys are doing at your dealership. You're telling them, hey, you don't need that. You, you don't need to even worry about your problem right now. Come and tell us what your problem is. And then we'll be able to fix it most likely or else we're going to give you a lot of information around this situation. So like you said, Lou, we don't repeat these behaviors. We don't do these mistakes in the future. But really, um, the BDC model is very transactional. And so it leaves in the kind of flailing in the wind, that customer that needs help. And when you ask them if they want cloth or leather, they're like, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't even know if I can get into a nicer, newer car. So sure, cloth, leather, uh, leather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really the entire model of the BDC, even the title BDC, it, like I, when you, you know, you chuckled a little bit, Fred, when I said whatever that is. <laughs> like we, I, mean, I know it stands for Business Development Center, but if we're all hanging with our friends on a Friday night, you know, having a beer with our with our buddies, talking about our week, and somebody says, "Hey, what do you do? What do you do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> what the the BDC or BDR? Like, where? It, where's the where's the rallying cry in that? Where's right. the in that? And so um, we had a similar experience in our agency. Um, at Gravitational Marketing, we have a call center too. They're calling on you guys all day long, trying to uh, get you guys introduced to talking to the 98%, like I was just talking about a little bit. We have an entire advertising campaign um, and process and systems around it to talk to the 98%, to be able to really relate with the 98%. Right. Um, but in our world, we were, you know, they were just a call center. And we realized that they were suffering. They were suffering from a lack of identity, um, of, of purpose. We had a lot of turnover. 
We mm-hmm. had, uh, it was like the plague. I mean, I know that's probably not even funny to say right now, but um, back then, I mean, this isn't a long time ago now. This is about eight years ago now. That team was very unhealthy, literally and figuratively. I mean, they were out constantly. There was always somebody that wasn't there that day. And the job, the mission of the department can't be lifted without uh, a team that's well, body, you know, body, mind, and soul, right? Yes. Yep. So it was just we. It was just constantly banging our heads into the into the wall with this team with great people on it. I mean, mm-hmm. super. We were incredibly proud to have them on as hires. We didn't just hire nobodies, right? We right. brought them into our culture. We wanted them to fit, and we couldn't get that puzzle piece to fit until we stopped just calling them a call center and gave them an identity and gave them a rallying cry, gave them a mission. We literally reintroduced the entire department to the company. We pretended in a company meeting that that department had been eliminated. Um, And then we turned on some music and started jamming because that's how we do things, you know, and um, reintroduced this entire team. They walked in. Um, they had their team shirts on. They were all decked out in their gear to match the theme. And from then on, we have not looked back. We don't refer to dealership BDCs as BDCs. If I'm traveling and I'm out, I'll uh, just walk in the floor and I talk to somebody on the sales team. And they're like, oh, the girl's back in the BDC. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> they need the support from everybody that they are doing something. It's difficult in the first place to be sitting on the phones all day long in what I very derogatory, what else can you say? They're sitting in their own stink all day long, (laughs) Mm -hmm. right? And then you just want to reduce their their role (laughs) into an acronym that doesn't really even mean anything, Business Development Center. So yeah, so that is the the why really behind changing that name. Um, and for the dealers that we work with, like you guys, you are able to take advantage of that lead acquisition oh, yeah. that 98% coming to you. And then uh, the coaching around how to take care of them, making sure that you empower the team, whether they're on the phones or on the floor, to understand that they've got something bigger than just metal to push yeah. today. And that's something that you have have led the way in as far as uh, making sure that it is clear that we do put the relationship over the revenue. We do put people over processes. Mm-hmm. We do make sure that it's we're building up the person that we are with every day instead of just trying to squeeze everything we can out of them without giving them the, the proper identity, giving them the value that we have for them. Right. To have them motivated, to have them excited to go do their job. Right. You completely change the culture. And I completely understand what you're talking about when somebody misquotes what that that title is or the jargon inside of the store Mm -hmm. doesn't line up. Because anytime that you're trying to uh, create a culture, it comes with language. Yeah. It has to have the proper language. Right. I come I'm a I'm a hip hop kid. Right. So I have hip hop culture in inside of me, but it comes with a language. Right. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what it is that you're a part of. That culture has a certain language. There's so many different things that we can say in the car business that most customers would look at us and be like, man, what what do you mean? I'm one legged up. I don't even understand what that means. Oh, it's because that's our language, but that's in our culture. When you're trying to change a culture, you have to change what, the language. What does that mean, though? 